Hello, my name is Hunter Worthy. And today I'll be talking to you about superb dog day cicadas, scientific name Neotipicin superbus. Here's the taxonomy for Neotipicin superbus. Their kingdom is Animalia, their class is Insecta, their order is Hemiptera, which they share with other cicadas, true bugs, hoppers, aphids, and alleys. Their family is Cicadidae, and they share a subfamily with other cicadas, which is called Cicadinae. I'll give you a description here of the superb dog day cicada. They average about 29 to 50 millimeters in length. Their abdomen and outer margin of the wings are very strong, yellowish tan with a very white underside. The rest of the insect is a distinct bright lime color. And compared to other species in the subfamily, they have reduced black patterning. Here's the range. Spotted as far north as Missouri, far west as New Mexico, far east as Mississippi, and south as Texas. And these gray states are the most heavily spotted areas. Neotibicin superbus has a quite variable habitat. It's seen in arid scrub environments, but it's mostly seen in forested land where conifers and hardwoods are abundant, a lot on eastern red cedars. They tend to prefer oaks and junipers the most, and they appear in Texas in May through August. Superb dog day cicadas are interesting because they are annual cicadas, which means they will be seen every year and they have a rather short lifespan. They'll live three years, usually underground, and then come up for one season and die. Periodical species of cicada remain underground for 13, 17 years until they're mature and then they come up for one season and they die. This is how they mate. Males of Neotipicin superbus tend to sing and the females do not. The males court them. The song is less musical but has a drawn out crescendo and they congregate in chorusing centers and they use special muscles on the side of their abdomen to mate. And you can see they join end to end over here. Here's the song of their mating. Watch the abdomen. Everybody in Texas knows that sound. Here's the beginning of their life cycle. A female punctures a tube-like hole into a branch or twig, and they oviposit their eggs into that punctured hole. They usually, per offspring season, they average about eight to 10 eggs, and then they die. The eggs survive, obviously. Here's the first instar. Uh, six weeks after being laid, the nymphs hatch, as you can see over here. They don't have much grip and will fall, and they burrow underground when they fall which they will stay for quite a while. Now we'll get into this underground life. They spend majority of their lives underground, as I said earlier, about three years. They'll grow through four instar nymph stages using echidiasis and feed on plant xylem from the plant roots. As you can see down here, they create tunnels and stuff to get to these plant roots. They usually move to different locations depending on the growth season and the root structure get more into the aspect of underground life. They, they help ease the burden of underground living. They will pee to moisten the soil because it can get rather dry at times. As previously mentioned, they do go through four instar nymph stages, molting three times through textiasis, and you can see that over here to the right. Once developed enough, they emerge from their tunnels and use their strong, fast legs to run as fast as they can to a perpendicular tree surface. Now we'll get into the signature last molting. Once cicadas find their perpendicular tree surface, they molt for their final time, diocese. Using acrobatic moves, they remove their, themselves from that nymphal skin and afterwards the skin remains in the trees. So these are those signature skins you always see during the summer and fall months that are just stuck to a tree. Now we'll get into their adulthood. Once Neotipis and Superbus molts for their final time, they undergo several changes. You'll see that they usually turn from off-white tan, as I, you could see in the nymph stages, to lime green in color. Their wings will inflate very much, and their head expands quite a bit, and their entire body will become harder, which is sclerotization. Now we get to the sad part, death. Once the dog days have ended, the cicadas die. They focus on little other than that mating season than mating. They don't really eat. They exhaust all their energies into mating. And they provide nutrients once they die to the plants that they once fed off because they don't go far from home usually. They are harmless insects despite how frightening they look. 
They do not sting, they do not bite, and they usually do not hurt trees, unlike the related locust family. However, they can hurt trees, only in extreme cases, usually weakling trees. They do need trees to survive by feeding off that xylem and for ovipositing their offspring into the stems. And they perform, they do something special. They perform flagging, which is pruning in some trees where they get the weakest branches off. And you can see this is what it looks like over here. It actually helps the tree. They are heavily preyed on insects. There are many aspects to them that make them like that. Their core centers give large populations and easy pickings for predators. They have no desire for aggression or anything besides mating during the time that they're up, and they don't have strong jaws, stingers, or any venom. Their common predators are basically anything with a mouth that is known to have predatorial behavior in nature. They Anything with a mouth like cicadas. And possibly amongst, you know, the rodents, marsupials, reptiles, birds, and other insects that feed on the giant cicada killer wasp, one of the largest wasps in all the United States, is renowned for being a murderer of them. The impact of superb dog day cicadas. They're commonly associated with their arrival of summer in Texas. Once you hear that loud crescendo, everybody knows it's time to get hot outside. They're aesthetically appreciated for their unique song compared to other cicada species. And they, they have a mainstay population that continues to thrive in big numbers despite all the predators. They really, really just produce at an alarming rate sometimes, and they're not going anywhere. And the same goes for the rest of their super family. And here are my sources. 